What is up YouTube, it's Kingfisher745 and welcome to my summer celebration coverage part 1. Now Agent, in case you didn't know, it's summer in New York City and Tony Stark was itching to work on some new tech. Remember that old shield armor with all the bugs and design flaws? Well, I went back and looked over the schematics and let me just say that Coulson really should have asked me for the assist on this one. I think it's pretty awesome that they put it like that, they can make fun of themselves. After all, I think I know a thing or two about powered armor and the weapon systems that go in them. Very true. Ahem. So here's what we're going to do for two weeks. I'll bankroll the venture out of pocket. We'll get to what this means in just a moment. But come back each day and I'll share the wealth as we get these bad boys online. And yes, you're most definitely going to want to log in every single day. I think I'll call this Tony Stark's Summer Celebration 2016. Has a good ring to it. You know how it is, brand it in a way where we can reuse the event name each year and just update the number. Oh, I know very well. Now as far as every bonus that you're going to get, we're going to cover them all, every single one, in the latter half of this video. To be honest with you, originally I planned to go ahead and make a video covering the E-ISO that's in the store. However, with the release of all the flight suits, and they're all on sale, and just with everything going on, the video was going to be like 40 minutes. So this is just going to be part one. As you can see, what you'll get on day one is 50,000 silver. So it does begin on August 3rd, today. The other thing that you will have noticed when you first logged into the game, is all the flight armors are on sale for 64 gold each. So we're just going to go over and take a look at them and then we'll get into more detailed analysis. The only suit so far that has been released was the Infiltrator Flight Suit and that was one in a previous PvP season. So you may already have that. But there's also going to be a Generalist, Tactician, Blaster, Bruiser, and of course a Scrapper. These are supposedly marked down from 128 to 64 gold so if you don't get them by August 17th, they will go back to full price. This is similar to the E3 armors. Missing out on one that may become pretty important to the meta is pretty difficult. That happened with the Blaster E3 armor. Unfortunately, at the same time, there's a ton of E-ISO being offered in the store. And it's also on sale. So personally, I'm probably going to spend my limited gold on those items, the Empowered ISO 8. And then we'll see if I can pick up a flight suit or not. The good news is they are going to be giving us gold and we'll look at that when we see the rewards. But you'll want to spend it wisely. Now as far as the Bat Taser and the Vibra Crescent, I would just pass. When it comes to the flight suits, I think it's important to at least take a look at one in action before we take a look at what they individually do. So let's go over to PvP. To start out with, these armors have two E-ISO slots. So not quite E3 armor, and not quite Vortex suit, but they do incredibly different things and still give you two options. Now we're not trying to win this match necessarily, there's just two things I want to illustrate. So we're going to take it easy on the enemy team. One thing I do want to show though is, you start out as your agent with all his gear. So you can use things like the Spirit Blade, Smothering Shadow, the Blackest Void, these are all things you really need to take into consideration. Because one major benefit I can see right away is we're going to take all this damage on our agent. We can still get out our debuffs. We could use some pretty important things to begin the match. And then once your agent's hurt, of course depending on how close to the edge you want to get, you can jump into the flight suit. All we're going to do with our team for the most part is just pass. And now once it's our agent's turn, he's definitely hurt. We could wait even longer. But we're going to go ahead and jump into that flight suit. The option is always there right from the first turn. So we'll just go over there, click suit up, and there you see we have a full health pool again. So that in itself could be very useful. Now we actually do somehow end up winning this match. But there's one other thing that I thought people may want to know. First, what happens when you get knocked out in the mech suit? 
And secondly, what happens when you have back for more? Well, neither of those things happens in this fight. So we're going to speed things up and then skipping ahead to when we do have back for more equipped. The first thing I can tell you is when we were knocked out normally without back for more, our agent was gone. The flight suit was knocked out and that was it. But once we had back for more equipped, once again it took us some doing to get knocked down on health. It's pretty crazy how hard it is to get knocked out when you want to be knocked out. I couldn't believe that. But here we were finally activating back for more. And then after we wait through a barrage of enemy actions, you'll see that the agent actually stays in the mech armor. So no, you do not go back to regular form and have your gear again. That was one thing I was wondering. So I do hope this clears that up at least. Now right after we do come back to life here, fully, we're gonna just exit out of this battle and I'm going to check out the official page over on Disney explaining what's coming up for the summer celebration and then also going into detail on each of these new flight armors. That's basically where we're going to get to on part 1. And then tomorrow we'll cover the E-ISO. I'll even buy a few so you'll see some of my top picks. And hopefully I can help you out on some of your choices as well. So let's head over to that first page and if you want to check it out for yourself, I'll place a link in the description below. Now as we were saying earlier, you'll get a new reward each day you log in. And it starts with that 50,000 silver. Then you'll get 8 gold, 40 CP, 10 gold, the Relentless Rapier, 12 gold, 500,000 silver, 14 gold, 80 CP, 16 gold, the Grace Note, 18 gold, 5 million silver, and finally, 20 more gold. That's 98 gold in total. So you could easily buy one of the flight suits, or you could buy quite a few of the E-ISO, since they are on sale. Now first of all, we have the Infiltrator flight suit, and we've seen it in action in the last two videos, especially the one posted yesterday. So we're going to begin with the next armor in line. This is going to be the Scrapper Suit. So first of all, it has the passive tracking system. Chance to apply targeted when attacking an enemy with a single target attack. Chance to apply targeted when an enemy attacks. And single target attacks apply fatal blow. Then its first action is a ground melee attack. Ignores most protect and avoidance effects. Costs 10% power. And causes off balance, winded, pincushion, pain, and of course it has fatal blow. That's a lot on one ability, it really is. And you're kind of seeing already that it's setting up a certain type of exploit. So moving on to action two, collateral damage. This takes 20% power. It causes grounded. That's gonna add impaired, neutralized, cornered, and once again, we'll have Fatal Blow. By this point, you should see Exploit Opportunity is going to really get hooked up from these first two abilities. That means anyone that has Opportunist or Exploit Opportunity attacks are going to go great with this mech suit. Now for Action 3, there's their Quick Action. 30% power and gives all allies wind up. Next attack does 25% more damage. Then one for all and all for one. But that's not it. It's going to grant yourself an extra turn right there. Pretty sick. And think about if there's an infiltrator. You could use that level two. Follow up I assume with the level one. And then for your actual second turn attack. Use this action number four. The plasma cannon. This attack has deadly crits. It does exploit opportunity. It ignores defense. And then, of course, Fatal Blow on all these single target attacks. So this could be a knockout move. Easily. I'm not 100% sure yet, but the Scrapper may be my least favorite. And this still sounds pretty incredible. So that's saying a lot. Next up though is going to be the Bruiser Suit. So it says, receive less damage from enemy attacks. Resistant to critical hits. Unexploitable. 
and then immune to fatal blows and near fatal blows. Plus it protects allies from single target and area attacks. Now all of that with the Elite E-ISO and possibly one of the other E-ISO that's now on sale? Yeah, seriously, this sounds like something I may have to try to get. I'm just thinking, this suit with FaZa, and then Cloak and Dagger or whoever else, could be a huge pain. But that's just the passives. For its action 1, it has Power Swat, Exploit Stun, and it has Paragon Exploiter plus Shield Slam. Action 2 has, well it says targets all allies, but I think that may be a mistake. It causes Subdue, Incapacitation, Dizzy, and Exposed to all enemies. We can see here that they're setting up that Paragon Exploiter attack, and anyone else that may have it on your team. For Action 3, it's the Area Blast. It's an AoE that causes Restrain, Melt Armor, Weakened, and Slowed. So there's the other two. Finally, for Action 4, that's going to be a Quick Action Buff, and it grants all allies covered taking 50% damage from all attacks, plus unyielding, prevents extra damage from attacks that exploit status effects, and it grants your agent a shield. Now that's a sick quick action, especially to go along with this full armor. I seriously have this one at the top of the list right now. So we'll have to see what the other ones have to offer after this. Next up's going to be Blaster. It starts with the Perpetual Motion Generator. This means chance for actions to not cause power drain. Next it says attacks have a chance to gain ethereal strike. And self-destruct protocol extends recharge, allowing mech armor to self-destruct. So when defeated by combat damage, it damages all enemies. That's basically fatal finish built in and it kind of has something similar to unavoidable with that ethereal strike. For its first action, it has a single blast, ethereal strike, a follow-up attack which is extremely nice, overexposure causes all applications of irradiated and radiation exposure to immediately deal damage, then it's still going to cause lock-on and chaos shot, plus it gives your agent perfect shot. So pretty nasty first action as well. Action number two is redirect reactor. This is a quick action. It says deals extra damage but lose a turn next round. Reactor Overload restores full stamina until an attack is made and causes the next attack to deal double damage. Gives you a chance to gain Focus Fortified Agile or Strengthened and next attack drains double power. This is like a arc reactor. It's going to boost the damage of an attack a lot. So what can this go with? Well, Action 3 is Bombs Away, Ethereal Strike, and then causes Endemic on all enemies, Breakdown, and Side Effects. That's a really nice debuff heavy attack. So actually, I would use that Overcharge basically with Action 4. Now check this out. Termination, Catastrophic, Ethereal Strike, Exploits Attrition. Finest Hour. With that double damage, this could be a full team knockout attack. Could you even imagine that? Termination. I'd really love to see this in action. This one's way up there on the list as well. And by the way, since you start out with your agent and your gear, you could still use a Spitfire team with the rapier and so on. Do that early barrage. Then jump in your flight suit and go for the AoE termination. Just a thought. Following that too though we have an interesting one, the Tactician Armor. First it has Chrono Injection. Chance to gain an extra turn after the agent performs an action. Buff and debuff actions become quick actions and removes a harmful status effect at the beginning of each turn. For action number one, it's Surgical Strike. This removes buffs from the enemy and causes flanked then grant your allies perfect shot. Action 2 is Fog of War. It's a bio attack. It causes biofeedback, intimidated, cower, and broken will to all enemies. That's getting quite a bit out of it. 
For action 3 we have Destabilizer. This causes disadvantage, hobbled, and staggered. It grants all allies toe to toe. Next melee attack deals extra damage. I almost wish one of these was a free action but maybe that'd be too much. For action 4 it's Rally Beacon. A quick action that applies Rising Up, Recuperation, Regeneration, an Instant Heal, and a Shield. Now that's a buff. I have to say this suit's fairly good and I could see where someone may want to use this but for me the Bruiser and the Blaster at the top still. Now for the final suit, the Generalist. First it's going to have Support System. Heals allies when entering mech armor. Applies morale boost to all allies when entering. That's going to give adrenaline to all allies after attacking. Gains power every round. And we already saw a support system. So moving on to action 1, it's light beam. Now this grants coordinated attack so allies have a chance to join in on this attack. It also gives all allies epiphany. The next attack is guaranteed to be a critical hit. Check out Action 2, Abolishing Blast. It causes Purged, Slow, Dizzy, Exposed, and Weakened to all enemies. Now talk about a Paragon Exploiter setup. That's huge. Instantly anyone set up that has that. Then for Action 3, it's Plague Safeguard. It grants all allies the immunity to endemic, manipulated, paradise lost, and despair. That's right, all those and despair in one. Plus it increases the effect of healing received. Insane. Absolutely insane. We thought FaZa was good, here's all of her things in one. I mean, don't get me wrong, she's still great. She has Hippocratic Oath. She still has a heal and so on. Remove and prevent debuffs. But giving that immunity to endemic, manipulated, paradise lost, and despair in one buff... That's just incredible. This is going to be a pretty awesome suit. I guess though, personally, I still may prefer FaZa for now. And maybe I'll get to use the Bruiser Flight Suit with her. Sounds pretty nasty. But check out this last action. Invigorating Charge. This grants all allies strengthened, focused, fortified, agile, and oh yeah, world's finest. So their attacks now gain finest hour. You didn't even need Finest Hour before. First I was thinking, wow, wouldn't that be great for... Wait a second. Everyone gets Finest Hour. You get Finest Hour. And you get Finest Hour. By the way, with all these buffs on pretty much all the armors, just think of Night America. He could reset the cooldown on any of them. But yeah, that's going to be the flight suits. I'm going to try to get probably one, but I am going to focus my efforts on getting the E-ISO first. So in the video tomorrow, we're going to go into an in-depth look at every single E-ISO that's up for this event. And I'll try to rank them and let you know which ones I'm going to buy first. In fact, since we'll have 8 more gold, that will allow me to buy probably an extra one or so. So make sure you check back for that one. For now, let me know what you think about these flight suits in the comment section below. As always, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Then until next time, good luck and take care.